have an issue with Prince Harry, but I'm starting to have an issue with how much I keep hearing about Prince Harry. So I'm starting to have an issue with Prince Harry. And he said he was leaving the royal family for privacy, his words. But ever since he's moved, all he's done is do a Netflix reality TV series, a tell-all book, and now a Spotify podcast. Not the most private activities, Harry. <laughs> to the tune of $100 million. And his book should have talked about how awesome it is to be the prince, how awesome it is to have everything, get any private jets, any backstage passes you want. But, but the mistake he made was he was kind of whiny in the book. He was like, my brother was mean to me. <laughs> He pushed me, and he hung out with his friends. <laughs> Sounds like you have a normal older brother. <laughs> and people feel bad for him. They're like, they're like, he was born into a job. He was born into an institution. Every human is born into a job. He's the only one born into a job where you don't have to do a job. And when he moved to Hollywood, was it hard? No, I have a friend that moved to LA and lived in a Walmart parking lot in his car. And after a year, he moved back to Sevierville, Tennessee with his parents. <laughs> People should feel bad for Douglas. <laughs> but do they? No, they do not. They make fun of Douglas. They're like, I can't believe you thought you'd make it. He's like, I know, I suck. Prince Harry moved to LA. Oprah hooked him up with Tyler Perry's mansion, which is a Tyler Perry movie I would like to see. With Prince Harry played by Tyler Perry. Meghan played by Tyler Perry. Oprah, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry played by Idris Elba. And Princess Kate, played by Meghan Markle. She's a solid actress. <laughs> and Prince William, played by Matt Damon. <clears throat> <clears throat> Call it Trading Places 3, Medea Take Sussex. <laughs> I saw that R. Kelly was arrested after an FBI agent watched his Lifetime docuseries. And it made me wonder, is the FBI finding out about crime the same way I am? <laughs> Just friend referrals on what's bingeable. <laughs> Should we arrest Robert Durst? Let's look at the tomato meter first. <laughs> yeah, he's doing well. I have a friend that watches murder documentaries because she said it'll help her, help her avoid murderers. But I feel like murderers are also watching murder docs, or as they call them, tutorials. <laughs> and because we're in North Carolina, I wanna ask you about the most interesting murder doc I'm aware of, The Staircase, are you familiar? <laughs> Happened in the Durham area. There's a documentary, and how many of you have heard of the owl theory? Love it. Yes, a bunch of you, right on, yeah. It kind of combines birds and murder docs, so it's like really right up my alley. <laughs> but basically, if you watch the Staircase documentary, this husband it goes to jail, even though there's really no motive, no murder weapon, uh, no evidence. There's no evidence. The whole trial, the prosecuting lawyer is just like, I mean, he is the husband. <laughs> And the jury's like, yeah, he does seem like he's the husband. <laughs> and the judge is like, husband, <laughs> send him away. <laughs> and uh, the neighbor first put out the owl theory, which is that there's an owl. That sounds crazy, right? That an owl did it until you hear the evidence. There was an owl that hung out in their neighborhood all the time. Owl killings, though rare, have happened. In her hair, they found owl feathers. And on her hands, traces of owl feathers. The murder scratches matched talons. 
and it happened at night. That's owl time. <laughs> but this local detective was like, owl feathers, talon marks, husband. <laughs> she could be attacked by a shark and people would be like, how do you think he pulled that off? <laughs> you think he dressed as a shark or? I never liked that guy. But as an avid bird watcher, it made me wonder <laughs> if you're killed doing something you love, would that take the sting off just a little bit? Seeing birds you've never seen before? Wow, a barred owl. And it's looking right at me. <laughs> Let me see those binoculars. That's not a barred owl, that's a great horned owl. No, it's not, Frank. Don't mansplain owls to me. You can hear from its distinctive barred owl call, who cooks for you? <laughs> Listen, who cooks for y'all? Hear that? <laughs> no, it's not. It's doing the distinctive great horn call. It's saying, who's awake, me too? <laughs> Frank, do you know one thing about birds? If you, how did the owl strikes, he strikes, they both did it, they were in cahoots, I said it. <laughs> They were in cahoots. <laughs> Send them to Alcatraz. I had to say it. I had to say it. Did you notice that groan? Thank you. Please note that groan as evidence. Because after every show, some guy will be like, dude, you should have said it was a whodunit. <laughs> but if I say it's a whodunit, y'all hate me and groan. And then if I don't say it's a whodunit, Four dads are like, man, missed opportunity. <laughs> oh boy, if you'd thought of that, man, you would have blown the roof off the place. <laughs> Who done it, man? Just go back to the writing board, man. Um, let's see. Um, did anybody else almost join a cult the last couple of years? <laughs> almost join a cult. I was watching the HBO documentary about the Nixium cult, and I don't think HBO meant it as a recruiting tool. <laughs> but they look like they're having a lot of fun up there, upstate New York. Their little bubble community, playing volleyball. I'm like, how do I join y'all's cult? <laughs> Sir, it's a self-help community. Well, I am brainwashed already, sign me up. The most susceptible people to cults are overly trusting and seeking community. That's my Myers-Briggs. <laughs> it's bad. But ultimately, I don't think I'd join a cult because I don't like doing chores. <laughs> Which is why I was thinking maybe I start a cult, just get the gravy, and actually that's why you're here tonight. I am doing some recruiting and Follow me, I'll teach you the meaning of life, which is to do chores for me. <laughs> but, you know, cult leaders have a horrible reputation, but we only ever hear about the charismatic ones that got famous, the ones that made it. You never hear about the other 10,000 guys that were like, follow me. And people were like, no, you're annoying, Derek. <laughs> and like, oh. Guess I'll just keep selling potato chips. <laughs> I didn't mean to uh, roast potato chip salesman on that one. <laughs> I know I'm susceptible to cults because of the one time I went to Bikram Hot Yoga. After 10 minutes, I already finished my little coconut water and I'm dizzy. I didn't realize how hot it got. I'm like, I'll just step outside. And as I get to the door, the instructor goes, hey, where are you going? And I'm so shocked to be called out in yoga that I was honest. I said, I'm going outside because I'm hot. He goes, I need you to stay here where I can see you so that I know you're okay. Okay, but I'm not okay. That's why I was leaving. 
But I, I can't say no to people. I struggle to say no. So I just returned to my mat and I was like, I guess I'll just grind this out <laughs> for 80 more minutes. <laughs> I made it 10 more minutes. And then I was definitely dehydrated. And I'm looking at the door. I'm like, I'm just going to make a run for it. <laughs> I start gathering my things in fake downward dog. <laughs> he comes over. He goes, everything OK? I'm like, please let me leave. <laughs> I'm an adult man. <laughs> I'm paying you $12 to be here. I'll pay you 40 to let me go. And he said, if you're too hot, you can just lay down on your mat. You'll be fine. It'd be better for the rest of the class if you didn't leave. And I'm looking at the rest of the class. They're avoiding eye contact. <laughs> so I just lay down for 70 more minutes, just so hot and so angry. Like, I hope I die so this guy gets fired. <laughs> I hope I die loudly so it's worse for the class. <laughs> Just furiously obedient. <laughs> the class ended, I was fine, unfortunately. But I went home and looked up Bikram. They're trained not to let anybody leave because once one person leaves, everyone will leave. <laughs> And I recently learned it went bankrupt, so I win. I win the law. I hung in there for the win, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I have been told many times that I have a soothing voice. And so I thought it'd be nice to do some soothing affirmations to really, really finish on what I was made to do. And uh, so I'll just say a positive affirmation and you guys repeat it back and we'll all feel amazing. Sound good? Great. I am blessed with this life. Hashtag blessed. That felt so good, didn't it? I know, it did. I have released all irrational fears and replace them with real fears. <laughs> okay, good. A little mumbly, but good. I forgive everyone who has ever left me. Except for Beth. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. He said it like he meant it. Yeah, some passion. I look really good thanks to this new coat from Banana Republic. Thank you. I just got an extra 10 grand for that. Appreciate it. I am actually a better overall person than Tony Robbins. I am not currently being indoctrinated into a cult. Nice, thank you. And lastly, I understand the intricacies of the Israel-Palestine conflict. <laughs> and ultimately, I stand with Tibet. Asheville, thank you so much. I'm Joe Zimmerman. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for coming out. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have given myself roses. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, you're standing. I'm delighted.
Wow, this feels good. This feels nice. Thank you. Thank you for giving me roses. All right, I'm going to leave. You're the best. This is crazy. I mean, I shouldn't have. <laughs> Thanks again, Nashville. I'm really going this time. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Namaste.